friends, Brian Gailey, Klamath Falls News. Welcome to Ask Klamath. Uh, you've been seeing this promoted for a couple of weeks now, and, and now is the time that we're actually here and talking about the show. What is the Ask Klamath? Ask Klamath is an Ask Me Anything style uh, talk show. Uh, less uh, everybody gets a car and more Ask Me Anything. And our guest today is uh, Commissioner Kelly Minty Morris. Commissioner, welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. Um, before we get into some questions, uh, we did get some questions from our fans and everything okay. like that, but I do want to go over a couple things. Um, if, if, uh, you didn't, if you did not get your questions submitted on Monday, we're going to be taking uh, questions live on this video as well. So mm -hmm. put your questions in the comment, and at the end, uh, Commissioner Morris is going to be answering some of your questions live right here on Ask Klamath. Um, I do want to mention that uh, if you do get your question asked on air, you'll be entered to win a family package to this year's Klamath County Fair. That's going to include tickets to the concert on Thursday night, the Cody Johnson concert. It's going to also include uh, passes to get in for the weekend as, as well as rodeo and a few other things. Uh, special shout out to the fairgrounds for doing that for us. Mm -hmm. um, so today's guest, no stranger to the camera. <laughs> I do want to welcome on our premiere episode, Commissioner Mel Kelly Minty Morris. Um, Commissioner, for people who might not be familiar mm -hmm. with who you are, can you give us a little bit of background? Sure, I would love to. So I call Klamath Falls my adopted hometown. I actually grew up in the Willamette Valley, but I moved to Klamath Falls as a 21-year-old right out of journalism school. I thought at that time my the only thing I wanted to do in life was uh, meet people, hear their stories, tell their stories and then hopefully be able to be helpful. And I did that for a long time as a journalist. Uh, some people will remember, and Brian and I were joking about it, I used to carry a big 75 pound camera around and yet we're doing this show on three cell phones, which is incredible. Uh, but now uh, I transitioned. I, I worked in journalism, I studied communication and business in college, and then um, spent some time in the communication field, telling stories, hearing people's stories, uh, trying to help them and then when I moved back to Klamath Falls in 2009 um, I worked for a nonprofit that did work around juvenile crime prevention um, and worked to hopefully keep kids out of the um, criminal justice system and sort of provide mentors for them and uh, then I ran for office so now similar to when I was a journalist I get to work with people hear their stories um, hopefully be helpful and and tell their stories so I'm thrilled to be on this inaugural show and uh, we already got some great questions, so I'm looking forward to hopefully providing some context. And one thing that I hope to do, and this is a Ask Me Anything show, but I also hope that we can do a little bit of, I heard Colonel Jeff Smith use this term the other day and I loved it, a little bit of myth busting. I think that oftentimes uh, there's a narrative around why certain things happen or why they don't. And it's like that old game of telephone that we all maybe used to play as, as young people or have certainly seen where as things um, go through different iterations of communication, they get lost, they get changed, they, they get a little um, just not, it, maybe not unintentionally, but just not truthful anymore. So hopefully I can provide some context around why people see some things happening um, that they may like or may not like, and I'm excited to answer questions. Awesome, well, I'm excited to get started into this. Commissioner Morris, we're actually gonna pay some bills real quick, and let's, uh, we'll be right back, guys. You can have your car taken to the shop of your choice. So my friend had her car taken to Excel Auto Body because she heard about their reputation for excellent work. They even gave her a written warranty that's good for as long as she owns that car. So Excel Auto Body is a very smart choice. Hi, I'm Rorick, owner of Excel Auto Body. No matter if the damage is minor or major, you'll want to choose us now. So if you are ever in an accident, you'll be ready. And remember, it's your choice what body shop you go to. Choose Excel Auto Body. It's your car, our reputation. Family fun is coming to your neighborhood. For nearly half a century, Davis Shows Northwest has been bringing loads of smiles to families throughout the Pacific Northwest. And they'll soon be in your community with thrilling rides, great food, and exciting games. From bumper cars to the Gravitron to the many children's rides, Davis Shows is a family tradition you don't want to miss. So look for them on these dates and get ready for fun and excitement. Davis Shows Northwest, a true Northwest carnival experience. back friends mm -hmm. Brian Gailey Clown Falls News we're actually sitting here with Commissioner Kelly Minty Morris mm -hmm. for our first episode of Ask Klamath 
Um, we got just in the first little bit there mm -hmm. before a commercial break, we got to know a little bit about uh, Commissioner Morris. And actually, why don't we get right into some of these questions? Um, so, Monday we asked uh, our audience, you guys, for questions that you would want to ask a uh, Commissioner Morris and mm -hmm. we got several good ones and, and we're actually going to go through as many of those as we can in the time we have uh, and we're actually going to start with uh, Phyllis Ferris. She actually asks about the grocery store downtown mm -hmm. and her question is, is Holiday Grocery is supposed to open in April and we're well into May and we see nothing on site. Mm -hmm. Can we get a realistic date of opening? Sure. So a uh, realistic date, great question, is probably around August. Uh, folks may or may not recall the county purchased the property that that store is on and then essentially resold it to Holiday Grocer, uh, North State Grocer out of Northern California. Really great entity. They have indicated to us that they want to get this right. So they are taking a little longer than they had maybe initially anticipated to do some of the remodeling work. Um, but to me, that speaks to their commitment. Again, they've said, we're not trying to necessarily do this fast. We want to do it right. Um, I do want to point out how significant this is as a win for downtown and for our citizens and for folks that live in that area because the stories that we had heard about how long it was taking for people to um, make their way, you know, a lot of times people are using public transportation or maybe walking or biking and having to get all the way to the other side of town to get groceries, to get uh, their pharmacy needs met. It was truly unacceptable and um, the vacation of the previous Hagen store had really left what they call a food desert and so I am so pleased that our board was able to be pretty creative and I do want to give kudos to Commissioner Donnie Boyd who really spearheaded the project um, but we were we were able to be creative and responsive to a community need Fortunately, you know, those things don't always all work out. Fortunately, in this case, it did. So, yes, it's taking a little longer than we would have liked, but I'm just so thankful. I can wait a few extra months to get a grocery store in there. Well, very good. Mm -hmm. So, August-ish is mm -hmm. kind of what we're hearing. That's what we're hearing. Okay. And I do want to point out that um, this was no uh, fault, if you will, of anyone locally or holiday grocer. They specifically had a um, company that they work with that has experience sort of redoing these old Safeway stores that they really wanted to use. I believe that uh, they're based out of Portland, and they had a backlog. So you know, what are you going to do? It's, it's one of those things. But um, I'm really fortunate that the end result, when we get that store open in August-ish, is going to be really incredible. Perfect. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, Beverly Lukowski is actually asking about some big box stores. Her question is, is uh, promises have been made for years about growing Klamath Falls. Mm -hmm. It is rumored that big box stores wish to come to Klamath Falls, but choose not to establish here due to governmental issues. Mm -hmm. Is this true? If so, why? Right. This is such a great opportunity for myth, the myth busting that I talked about. So first of all, not true at all. Um, in fact, both the city and uh, the city of Klamath Falls and Klamath County specifically hired a retail recruiting firm to help help us attract these big box stores, if you will, or, or, or just those, those retailers. Um, so here's what we've learned, and this is the myth busting part of it. Um, essentially, the reason why a, um, or the method, if you will, that a big box store looks at oftentimes is number of housetops. So it's not, does this, as you come into the city, does the sign say 20,000 people? Or they're much more sophisticated than that. They can evaluate how many rooftops are in their service area, if you will. So we do get credit. Oftentimes people ask, um, and I'm, I'm making sure I reference and get the numbers exactly right. People say, well, we get Alturas, or we get this, or we get that. That's totally true and they're sophisticated enough they go through credit card receipts and what the zip codes are of where people are buying things they've got this dialed in so on a Costco for example because we often get asked and we often get blamed 
unfairly for keeping Costco out, which couldn't be farther from the truth. We've tried to recruit them. And the bottom line is this, a Costco looks for what they call a trade area of about 200,000 housetops. So our trade area with Klamath Falls, Klamath County, and then some of those outlying areas we pull from is about 80,000. We just don't meet their threshold yet. It's unfortunate um, in some people's mind. Of course, there's also that debate. Do we really? There's other people who say we don't need those silly box stores. We like our mom and pop shops. I'm not going to get into that debate. I respect um, both sides and both opinions. But I will just say, in an effort to do some myth busting, it is not as though the county or the city have kept out a Costco. So in, in kind of a follow-up to sure. that, in, in, um, and this isn't Bev's question, Beverly's question, but if, if there's a 200,000 count, a rooftop mm -hmm. if, in their target area, would we essentially be counted for the Rogue Valley's store? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm sure that the uh, Medford area gets credit, if you will, and I'll you know, use the air quotes, for the Klamath County shoppers because, again, these companies are sophisticated. I mean, they know how to read data and pull data. So we're not, um, this isn't like a, why can't you just sell them on us? They, it's, it's hard numbers and we're just, in this instance, we're just not close to their threshold. So it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. Is there anything that the community can do that might be able to help that, even though there's a numbers game? Um, in terms of Costco, I mean, we've really tried in terms of uh, trying any method we could think of to woo them. Um, that's a good question, Brian. I, I don't really think there's probably anything the community could do other than, I guess I'll make this pitch now um, because it comes from my heart try to shop local I mean I and I'm not gonna say everybody's gonna do it perfect all the time I don't do it perfect all the time but I really really try and that helps our people you know keeps our people employed su supports our, our businesses so shop local shop local mm -hmm. that actually leads us into our next question uh, Jerry Ingram asked where are all the jobs mm -hmm. that every one of the commissioners had said they would get in Klamath if they were elected mm -hmm. Another great opportunity for some, a little bit of um, myth busting. And I, I, hope, I hope that doesn't sound disrespectful because I, I think people are asking really great questions um, and I'm thrilled to be here to answer them. So on that note, um, I checked in with the, because I knew the statistics off the top of my head, but again, I wanted to, I'm the former journalist in me, I really believe in being totally accurate and not just shooting off the hip. So I checked in with the senior economic analyst for the Oregon Employment Department um, for the state. And uh, I have the graph and the data and I'd certainly, um, these are all public documents that if people wanted to contact me directly, I'd be happy to shoot them your way. But basically, um, so if you go back to 2012, so that's kind of fair. I started in 2014 and so I thought, you know, we'll go from then to now. So in 2012, the annual unemployment rate for Klamath County was 11.7%. The most recent data around the unemployment rate for Klamath County as of March is 6.3%. That is almost half. Um, additionally, according to uh, the senior economic analyst, um, our unemployment rate now in Klamath County is, and this is her quote, near the lowest unemployment rate the county has seen since 2000. That's significant. Um, does that mean we don't have room to grow? Of course not. We still have room to improve on this. Um, we also definitely want to make sure that we are getting the right kind of jobs, jobs that pay uh, a family wage, so to speak. But we do need some acknowledgement, and I know that people can get uh, the narrative around things are so bad can start to snowball, and I get it. Sometimes it doesn't, you don't feel the progress or the, the benefit, and maybe people are hurting themselves personally, but the reality is the numbers are moving in the right direction. We're, we're on a good trajectory. Very good. Well, Kelly, we're actually going to take a quick commercial break. We'll come back and uh, answer a couple more of these questions.
You can have your car taken to the shop of your choice. So my friend had her car taken to Excel Auto Body because she heard about their reputation for excellent work. They even gave her a written warranty that's good for as long as she owns that car. So Excel Auto Body is a very smart choice. Hi, I'm Rourke, owner of Excel Auto Body. No matter if the damage is minor or major, you'll want to choose us now. So if you are ever in an accident, you'll be ready. And remember, it's your choice what body shop you go to. Choose Excel Auto Body. It's your car, our reputation. Family fun is coming to your neighborhood. For nearly half a century, Davis Shows Northwest has been bringing loads of smiles to families throughout the Pacific Northwest. And they'll soon be in your community with thrilling rides, great food, and exciting games. From bumper cars to the Gravitron to the many children's rides, Davis Shows is a family tradition you don't want to miss. So look for them on these dates and get ready for fun and excitement. Davis Shows Northwest, a true Northwest carnival experience. Friends, we're Angela Clam Falls News, and this is Ask Klamath. We're sitting here with Commissioner Kelly Minty Morris. I welcome you back. Thank you. Um, we're going to continue on with some of these questions that we got from everybody. Um, Ed Medina has a question regarding marijuana, and Ed, if, you, if many of our fans out there might know, is is quite an advocate of the uh, the whole uh, marijuana area, uh, is to say. So. Ed says, since we have seen 10 times the taxes created by the cannabis industry, new jobs and ancillary businesses booming as a result, why aren't we considering it for Klamath Falls? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and hi Ed, um, I know Ed, and um, nice guy. So here's the deal from an elected official's perspective. We, you elect your representatives to uh, make a lot of decisions on your behalf on a daily basis. So essentially people put trust and faith in us, they've, they've hired us. So I was hired by Klamath County to make a ton of decisions that never directly go in front of a person. I mean, that would be uh, so cumbersome, you know, hey, are we gonna hire this person, this, that, it, it, that just can't happen. However, there are instances where the public directly weighs in on an issue. This is one of them. The public has weighed in twice on the, on around marijuana, on Measure 91 and then a referendum um, after that. Both times, the Klamath County voters have pretty overwhelmingly said, we're not interested. So from my perspective as an elected official, that's where it ends for me. I mean, there's really nothing I can do. It doesn't really matter, and, and I don't mean this to sound flippant, but it doesn't really matter what Kelly Minty Morris's opinion is on it. I work for the voters. They have spoke loud and clear, and so that's, that's it. Now, if the voters change their mind, if there's a new approach, I'll work around that as it, as it comes, but right now, the voters in Klamath County have said, this is not the direction we want our elected officials to go, and I, I honestly can't imagine an elected official who would hear that strongly from voters, not once but twice, and then go in the other direction. I, I, I don't think that person would have any business being in office. Very good. Uh, following up with that, mm -hmm. uh, be, because of the, uh, the cannabis issues and things like that, uh, illegal unlicensed black market is becoming more prevalent. Mm -hmm. and, and Ed has a follow-up question that says, with what is the county doing to address the exploding illegal unlicensed black market that exists due to not having a public place to buy a legal product? Mm -hmm. So um, that's, you know, Ed is absolutely right on that. Um, I will note that that's not just happening here in Klamath County, that's happening all over the state. And for those that are not as versed in the issue, um, different counties have done different things with it, different cities, I mean, it's, it's it's sort of all across the board, and yet everybody has had a lot of issues with it, including the black market issues. So uh, we're working through it. We did, as a board of commissioners, direct some additional resources for the county sheriff to specifically be able to hire someone to help work through some of these issues, and, and we're doing the best we can. It's messy, it's not perfect. Um, it's not perfect anywhere around the state, and so we're doing the best we can. Okay, thank you. One last question that we're going to ask here, uh, it actually came in from Jason McMurray, who is a concerned parent, has kids in the county school district. Um, Jason is asking, is it possible to have a police present at school zones during a start of school lunch and the dismissal hours of school days, referencing the um, uh, people speeding through the school mm -hmm. zones and things like that? 
Yeah, all that would clearly be a better question for the sheriff, but I'm happy to pass along um, the request to both the sheriff and chief police, the chief of police, uh, Dave Hensley. And I could use this as a quick opportunity to just say what's been one of the things that's been really great over the last um, year plus is the better collaboration and cooperation that's happened between our law enforcement agencies. So while I think perhaps in the past there's been a little bit of territorialism or um, just not working together as good as we could, I firmly believe that Sheriff Kaber and again Chief Hensley and others just are really good team players now. So um, yes, getting that information to them in hopes that they can direct resources that way. Um, these are these are your law enforcement dollars, like right, like we are. I pay for city police, I pay for county sheriff, and it is completely reasonable to request resources be placed in areas that we prioritize. And school zones are. A really good thought. I, th I, I mm -hmm. think so as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, guys, we're actually going to take one last commercial break here before we wrap up. We're actually going to take this break. We're going to come back and we're actually going to ask Kelly if she's got something on her mind. <laughs> you can have your car taken to the shop of your choice. So my friend had her car taken to Excel Auto Body because she heard about their reputation for excellent work. They even gave her a written warranty that's good for as long as she owns that car. So Excel Auto Body is a very smart choice. Hi, I'm Rorick, owner of Excel Auto Body. No matter if the damage is minor or major, you'll want to choose us now. So if you are ever in an accident, you'll be ready. And remember, it's your choice what body shop you go to. Choose Excel Auto Body. It's your car, our reputation. Family fun is coming to your neighborhood. For nearly half a century, Davis Shows Northwest has been bringing loads of smiles to families throughout the Pacific Northwest. And they'll soon be in your community with thrilling rides, great food, and exciting games. From bumper cars to the Gravitron to the many children's rides, Davis Shows is a family tradition you don't want to miss. So look for them on these dates and get ready for fun and excitement. Davis Shows Northwest, a true Northwest carnival experience. Hey friends, welcome back. Brian Gailey, Clown Falls News, Ask Klamath. We're actually talking with Commissioner Kelly Minty Morris. Uh, Commissioner, the, uh, we, we've actually had a glitch, a technical glitch here today. <laughs> um, we uh, were supposed to be live with this show, unfortunately due to the glitch, and who knows, it's the internet gods, I guess, <laughs> has decided that we're not live today, mm -hmm. but we are recording this, so it's gonna play back, so if you're watching this, thank you very much. If you're catching <laughs> it on YouTube or Facebook, that's wonderful. Um, Commissioner, you are involved in so many different mm. things. Uh, you, you're going in a million different directions. <laughs> what, what do we need to know about what's going on right now? Oh, it's such a, um, I could go in a lot of different directions. Um, I guess what I'll say is this, the couple things that I wanna touch on, and I've realized throughout this process, I am a lot more long-winded than I thought I was, so I apologize to Brian for like punching all kinds of holes in his timelines. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll do this briefly and say um, a couple things I'm very, very passionate about. One is Oregon Tech. I sit on the board of trustees. I truly believe that a better relationship between, uh, they call it town and gown, your community and, and a university, benefits all of Klamath. Um, so I'm really proud to serve on there. Um, I'm very involved, very engaged, even to, uh, this week, for example, I'll be at the Catalyze Klamath contest, which is where it's sort of a Shark Tank-like contest with students who have great ideas and things they've invented, and I've participated in it every year since it started, and the county supports it. Um, but I just love that. I, I love to have hands-on involvement with the university because, again, that's key to our future. Um, another thing I'm very, very passionate around is our uh, military here, uh, Kingsley Air Base. I work with Colonel Smith and other leadership at the base a lot because, make no mistake about it, that base is critical to the future of Klamath County. Um, and it's also, frankly, uh, supporting the base, it's, it's the right thing to do. Um, those men and women are very, very important to me, near and dear to my heart. And then I would say, um, finally, well, I'll do it quick, two things. Um, also, most people know I'm really passionate about the Blue Zones Project. Um, that is a opportunity, an amazing opportunity that we have as a community to help um, improve our economic bottom line and improve our health outcomes through policy changes and other um, areas where we just sort of 
give make the healthier choice the easier choice and finally um, I was really excited probably about a year ago now to be appointed by the governor to the um, Oregon Business Development Commission um, anyone who knows me knows I don't really shut up about economic development and jobs and how do we get more folks in Klamath County working in good jobs so I was glad for the jobs questions earlier and so I love sitting on that commission to uh, be able to get Klamath at the table and also have that um, statewide perspective. So I do stay very busy. I get accused of um, it being impossible to get on my calendar because I'm so busy, but I, I feel as though, and I hope that I'm also very accessible. And so I love opportunities like this to talk with people and hear their questions and hopefully give them satisfactory answers. Well, we appreciate being able to get on your calendar. I know it is very busy. <laughs> um, quick shout out to our location here, mm. Gathering Grounds yeah. Roastery. Love these guys, Jason and his crew. They do some fantastic stuff. So cheers to yes, you guys. Cheers. Thank you very much. Uh, again, due to that technical glitch, we are not able to take your live questions uh, but I do have a couple of questions that I wanted to ask, sure. if, I, if that's okay. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, Commissioner Morris, what does a commissioner do? <laughs> that is a great question. Um, so if you think of it this way, if you think of a company, because most people are familiar with this type of structure, um, a company operates with a CEO. And the three commissioners, so the, the totality of the three commissioners together, serve as the CEO, if you will, of the entire county. So we have uh, more than 400 employees. We have a very large budget. Um, we hire and fire department heads. And, and when I say department heads, you know, we run big departments that you're familiar with, like public works, which is your roads, or um, your clerk's office, which is your elections, which is near, uh, near and dear to my heart, but also uh, front of mind since elections were yesterday. And, um, you know, and then other things, uh, animal control and public health. And I, I mean, almost anything that you can think of as uh, something that you just sort of take for granted as a basic service is probably provided by your county government. And then we, oversee that and that old expression the buck stops here i mean at the end of the day it's your commissioners that do that and then we also serve in a wide variety of other um, roles on different boards and other leaderships you know i mentioned oregon tech and some of the other things i'm involved in my colleagues have different um, interests and passions and skills and so you know across the board one thing that i think is really great about the current makeup of the board is we're we're all going in different directions, but I think um, in doing that, we're really serving all of our citizens. Yeah, there was a, 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 a I don't know if it was you or one of the other commissioners, uh, uh, maybe Commissioner Groot had get, got me a form that basically shows all the different things you guys do, and it's mm -hmm. kind of divided by silos. Mm -hmm. Each commissioner has certain departments that they're responsible for, and it's actually quite overwhelming. There's <laughs> That's a long list of things, and it was it was a full size sheet of paper like this that was mm. completely filled up, and, and it was like ten point font. It was oh, yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we have quite a bit. we do. We have twenty six just departments, so those we have direct responsibility, and then there's you know twenty or thirty different boards and commissions, and you know the, everything's divided between the three of us. But I would say, you know, I probably have between twenty and thirty things that are on my plate, my responsibility. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, Commissioner, again, I want to thank you for your thank time. I uh, appreciate that. You do have a very busy calendar. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to, uh, hopefully this all went well for you, other than our <laughs> glitch about going live. Guys, again, I apologize for that. We're going to get that bug worked mm -hmm. out. Um, it was showing we were going to go live, and then we didn't <laughs> go live. So uh, before we wrap, I do want to thank a couple businesses that mm -hmm. make this possible. Mm -hmm. You see the logo on the screen right there, Excel Auto Body, Rourke and his team. They do fantastic stuff. Thank you, guys. Uh, Excel Auto Body, your vehicle, our reputation. Klamath County Fairgrounds is a great sponsor of ours. It reminds you that Spring Carnival is around the corner just at the end of the month, and ticket pre-sale tickets are on sale right now. I believe they're 20 bucks, and they're not going to be that cheap when you go there in person. So, uh, when the carnival's here, they're going to be more. So, and then Gather Grounds, of course, you know, product placement, it's all about the product <laughs> placement, right? Uh, Jason and his team here, fantastic stuff. Rose's own coffee in-house, mm -hmm. and it's amazing. Uh, Ask Klamath is a production of Klamath Falls News. It's hosted by myself, Brian Gailey. Our guest today was Commissioner Kelly Minty Morris. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, our off-camera producer is Damian Johnson. He's right over Good there. Job, hey, hey, there he is. 
doing a good job over there switching and monitoring audio for us. Uh, if you did not catch the entire broadcast, this, it's now going to be a replay because we weren't live. Uh, don't worry, uh, Facebook's going to do its magic and whatnot. And it will be in our archives. It will also be on our YouTube page uh, under our archives there. Um, so if you are a business that is interested in sponsoring, visit AskKlamath.com. If you want to know more about uh, the show or rewatch this later, again, AskKlamath.com is our website for this. It's a division of, again, Klamath Falls News. Uh, if you were entertained and you learned something, <laughs> click the like button. You know, we always like that. Uh, we know we did something well. Check us out on our social media channels. And we will see you on our next show, which is going to be May 30th, and it will feature... Scott White, Executive Director of the Klamath Water Users Association. See you guys. Bye.